Hello, good day and welcome back to Go on the Run and today we're going to continue looking at Go Fiber. So what are we going to talk about today? In the previous video, I showed for any route we can have multiple handlers, but there was a caveat. And the simple reason was that multiple handlers only work if the previous handlers call next to say, I want to continue that call. Otherwise, the other handlers don't get called. So I've simplified our diagram here to say that we have an endpoint that is an HTTP method, and you know what an HTTP method is. At this point, is the get, the post, the delete, all that good stuff, and a path. And of course, we have our multiple handlers. And what we saw is that any one of these handlers could return to the user, but then if that happens, it short circuits the chain and no other handler after it gets called. What is this useful for? We saw some example. We can insert a request ID. We can do things like login for all requests. And then we can have the last handler in the chain actually do the work that's meant for that um, route. So there's another way to really look at this. And we can say all of the handlers before the last one are middlewares. So that's the special name we'll give to those handlers that uses next. What we have now is that a route can have many middlewares attached, and then at the end is a single handler. So I want you to keep this um, new term middleware in mind because that is what we're going to be talking about. So a middleware is a handler. The only thing that makes it special is that it uses next to call the next handler. Whereas when we say we have a handler for a route, it really doesn't call next. It's really going to be like the last one that's called. It's intended to figure out exactly how to handle that request, assuming it gets called. Now we know that the middlewares can themselves return before call in next. So that's possible. And we'll see that though you can do this. Let's say you have a middleware that's doing authentication. Well, the first thing you want to do is check and see if the user is logged in. If they're not logged in, you don't want to propagate that call onto the handler that's actually going to look up information because there's no user to look up um, information for. So at that point, that handler can just short circuit it. And that's a really good use case for that. All right. So let's jump to our command line and play with some uh, middleware and see some of the middleware that are offered by Fiverr itself. So I'm going to start by going to the Fiverr documentation. And what I'll do is let's go here to, we saw that though we can create an application which allows us to define our road handlers, which we saw you can have multiple handlers and we play with that already. Um, but here is where um, the middleware that I mentioned comes in. And so if you click here on middleware, you can see it says middleware is a function chained in the HTTP request cycle with access to the context which is used to perform a specific action. For example, logging every request or enabling course origin request scripting. And there are a bunch of other ones doing authentication, caching, and all this other stuff. We're going to look at some of them, not all of them, right? And so I want to draw your attention to logger here and request ID. We'll come, we'll revisit this. I just sort of want to show you um, what we're going to be talking about today. So let's go to our command line. So we're going to start, of course, with um, copying our episode six into seven because we're in. Um, episode seven now, and we'll go and look at that code. So we'll do coding or VS code or whatever editor you're using. That's fine. So the first thing I want to do is rearrange our example a little bit. So what I'm going to do is previously, um, I just had this one handler. So I decided to put it in main. And this time today, for our example, I want to have a few handlers. So I'm going to put them pull it out and put it back in its own file um, package called handlers. Similarly, we have these set of handler with this c.next. And as we just learned, when a handler uses c.next, we give it the special name a middleware. So I'm going to move these two into their own package. So let's do that. 
So what I'm going to do is um, create two handlers in this file. Uh, first, I'm going to change this handler to just be get items. Um, I don't really care about the get items by ID. And then I'm going to copy it and create a second handle from it. And I'll call it one do login. And the reason for having the two handlers is so I can demonstrate having an endpoint that is authenticated, like after you use the login, they can get their items and an endpoint that is not login, that's unauthenticated, like do login. You want to be able to do the login <laughs> without first having to use a login. So um, this is the endpoint that you can imagine that you're going to post the username and password, and then it's going to try and authenticate the user. So here are two handlers, nothing fancy. All right. So the only thing left is to go now create our middleware file by moving the two middlewares. Here are the two middlewares that we um, move from the main function. And now we'll just go back to our main that go and update the code there. All right. So this is essentially what we had before, except things are in packages now. Now a quick test to make sure that everything is working and we're good. So once we start up our task here to look at code changes, we'll try and do a get on slash root and we shouldn't have anything there because we didn't register route there. Um, then we'll do a get on items and this should work. And it does. So great. All right. So, oh, we have this issue here. It said bad key. The issue here is that it says bad key for get item request. So let's go fix that. It basically means we don't have a key in our structural log line for um, the path. So let's fix that. And once we go back and run, we can see that, yep, we got everything. And there is the path key and the value for structural log. Okay, what's the next thing? So now we can go back and add our get login or we can add our do login um, endpoint. Um, we just duplicate this, change the path, and then of course change the handler. And the reason for this is because for do login, we want the same thing. We want a login request to have a request ID and we also want it to be logged. So we're doing the same thing. All right. So once again, this should work. Of course, we for login, we don't want to do a get. We actually want to do a post. With that change in place, we can go test that we can do a post to login and that that works. OK, so that works when we do a post to login, but we're not actually doing anything other than saying that we got a post on this endpoint and we're saying it's OK. Now, remember what I said? What we have here are middlewares. So look at what we're doing. We're duplicating the registration of middlewares for multiple endpoints. What if, since we know that we want to have a request ID for every request and login for every request, what if there was a way for us to make this much easier? And so Fiber gave us the, that use method and it's specifically for middlewares, for registering middlewares. So now we can say um, use middleware request ID and then request login in that order. Again, the order in which you register your middleware is the order in which they'll get called. And notice from the documentation, it says when you don't specify a path, it applies to slash, which means all requests. So now, since slash item and slash login is under slash, the slash path, it means they too will be affected by this middleware. And that's exactly what we want. And so things are much simpler now because we can clearly see that what we want is for all our endpoints to be have a request ID and for all of them to be logged. And we don't have to worry we're repeating it. We don't have to worry that if we had a new endpoint, how we got, we might forget to add the set of middlewares that are supposed to be there, nothing like that. So let's now test this and you can see from our doc um, debug output that it's registered for slash. And so if we run post again, we can see that there is the um, log request and we also get the login 
and then if we do get we get the same thing okay so this is okay but we're not really doing anything when we try to log in and we're certainly not doing anything when we request items to verify that the user is logged in so next we want to write a verify login middleware this middleware is specifically going to be for slash items endpoint then we're going to add it to our application right now it doesn't really do much right it's just a very simple um, middleware and at least we know that though we're getting it's getting called and it's returning a unauthorized status code if there's no authentication error so let's return to our login handler and what we want to be able to do is make sure at all when a user logs in that if it's the user the correct username and password that we're looking for then we give them a token in our jwt now of course it's not going to be a real jwt but we give them a jwt so let's see so we go back to do logic and we're going to create this structure to capture the username and password then we're going to um, ask or context to parse the body a variable of that type login request if we can't parse our body then we're going to return like you know there's a bad request and whatever error message we get from um, trying to parse that body the other thing we're going to do is then try to see if the username and password is exactly admin and if it is then we'll go and say okay let's return a bearer token which is on line 33 otherwise on line 30 we're going to say it's an error message if it's neither the username and password that we're looking for all right assuming this works and again you can see it's not very much complicated the only thing you have to do here is take the username and password and call out to your authentication service and then have it you know construct a proper jwt for you and then you get that back and you return it to the user that part we're skipping here because we don't have an authentication service we don't want to deal with all that notice on line 33 we're putting our token which is called our bearer token as the value for the key authorization you can have a lot of debates about whether or not this should be in the response body i'm going to put it here in the header the other thing you could have done was create a cookie but i didn't want to deal with cookies right now all right so now at least for login it's okay we know what value we're supposed to look for when we get a request for items so now if we go back to our verify login middleware we can now update this to say hey not only do we want a value for um, the authorization header in the request because now this is dealing with a request when we want to verify that the user is logged in but rather we also want to make sure that it's a string that has a very specific value. If we have a value and it's not this JWT, then it's probably an invalid JWT. So let's just uh, return a status code that says bad request. And we specifically say that oh, um, this is an invalid token. Okay. Um, otherwise, that's it. We really don't have to do anything else. So if we go and test this now, we can see if it works. So we are going to try and do a request for items. And this says unauthorized, which is what we expect because it's going to call our verify login middleware. And that is specifically set to say return, you know, unauthorized if there is no authentic authorization header. And then if we do a login, we're getting that we cannot process the body, which again makes sense because it doesn't have anything in the body now if we specify username and password no notice how we get in the header a um, bearer token telling us yes this user and password combination is valid so now we can then go back now to making a request for our items but this time we have to say we're doing an authenticated um request and so we'll say the type is bearer using the capital a option to HTTP and then the value for bearer is the one two three four five six seven eight nine zero that's our JWT pretend JWT by the way and the value we specify for this authorization is minus is specified with a minus lowercase a so note that and using HTTP if you're not using HTTP IA then you can use curl all right 
So now I can make my request to items with this um, authorization header and it says invalid token. So why does it say invalid token? Well, if we look, scroll up, we can see in the request that the authorization header is added with bearer, the value bearer one, two, da, 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 whatever we specify. The problem is that within our verify login, we actually looking for the value one, two, da, 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 without looking for the full value, which includes the word, the letter bearer. So if we fix that and then we send our request, we'll see that now if we go run this again, we should see that oh, it should say um, we the request for items is valid and that's exactly what we get. Okay, so this is a quick demonstration to show you just how you can use middlewares to do things like authentication, login, and request ID. Now, I said that I'll return to the Fiber documentation and look at some of their middlewares. So specifically, I want to quickly cover logger and then request ID and the monitor. But let's start with logger first. So for the logger middleware, it's very easy to use. You can see it's just a new function that takes some configuration. And in the example for the documentation here, you can see that how you can even call it without even passing in any kind of configuration. So let's just copy the import path and go update our um, code, essentially your main that go. But what we'll do first is copy our example. So we have a completely separate example. So we make sure we're in the correct directory by going to example two, starting up the task again. And then once that's running, we go modify main that go. And so it's very simple. We just import the login middleware pa um, package and then we configure it for our Go application and then we make a request. And as you can see, the log entry is the log output is very different than what we had before. So notice that the logger middleware includes the status code for that request. So you can quickly tell if a request failed or not. And we can see in this example output that we made two requests. One was forbidden and that's why we had our authenticated. And so that's why we had a 401. And the next, the other one was successful and that's why we got a 200. And the latency was essentially milliseconds. So it was printing out in seconds. So it just has zero seconds. But notice we can see what type it was also, you know, the method and the path. Okay, so that's the logger middleware. So if we quickly configure our application to use the request ID middleware, again, this is just a matter of importing the, middle, the request ID middleware path. So first we have to ensure that we're using the correct um, packages. So for our handler and middleware, so we wanna make sure we're, in, we're referencing exercise two. So if we look now at the updated get items handler, you'll see on line 12, we retrieve the request ID from the response. Now that is because Fiber request ID, the request ID middleware puts the ID in the response. It has to. If it wants the user to be able to get the, see the request ID, well, it has to put it in response where the user can get it. Um, we could just have to retrieve it and then we can log it or use it. So we do exactly that. And if we run, we can see here in the response header, we have the X request ID. So the client could use that information later or definitely we can use it. So of course there are many other middlewares and you can see a list of them here. I'm not really gonna stop and go through them, but some interesting ones to check out are KeyAuth, um, the limiter, and um, today I want to talk a little bit about monitor. So the monitor middleware is another one that is very simple and easy to use. You can add it to your application I recommend that unless you have really good reason not to add it, you can you should add it to your application. If you want, you can secure it behind a uh, middleware that check that you know it's the you know admin or whoever you need to make sure that only they can access this endpoint. But it's a good thing to have probably join at least during the development. All right, if you've made it this far, please consider giving the video a thumbs up, leaving a comment. If you have issues, leave a comment there about it. Let me know what worked, what didn't work, what you like, what you didn't like. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. If you're new, please consider subscribing. 
Finally, if you know anyone who is in the market for anything Tesla, whether it's just a test drive a Tesla, to buy any Tesla product, solar panels, swag from Tesla store, buy a Tesla vehicle, I have my Tesla referral link on the screen. Please ask them to use it. You can use it. They can use it. Friends, family. You can give it to as many people as you like. There are no limitations. Um, we both benefit. You get some points off if you buy something. I get some points if you do. So appreciate it. All right. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye.